Hanımlar basketbol severler bu kanalda basketbolun gelişmesi için elimden gelen her şeyi yapacağıma söz vermiştim. Bugün bir adım daha bir attık. Bir adım daha hem de kocaman büyük bir adım daha hızlıdan <gülüyor> önce. Beşiktaş'ın yeni transferi Shaquille Mekisik'le video çektim. <gülüyor> Kendisine buradan çok selamlar olsun. Efsane bir video oldu Yakında ya efsane. çok güzel planlarım olacak. Direkt videoya geçelim. İyi seyirler. Kanala abone olmayı ve beğen tuşuna basmayı unutmayın. Ladies and gentlemen, Shaquille McKissick is here. Uh, glad to see you back in Turkey, man. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be back. Um, only two flights this time, so uh, I was happy about that. <laughs> Hope you had great time with your family back in USA, man. Yeah, I did. It was amazing. By the way, congrats on the Beşiktaş trade. Uh, I think Beşiktaş, uh, Beşiktaş fans gonna love that uh, place for you. No, I'm just really happy uh, to be a Beşiktaş. So, to all my Beşiktaş fans, what's up? Yeah, all right. First of all, I wanna thank you because you directly messaged me on Instagram. Uh, my goal is improve the basketball culture in Turkey, and that means a lot for me, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. I feel like a lot of um, players hide behind their phones and Instagram and you know social media but now I'm here that's my guy thank you I saw a lot of stories about you on the internet like about your basketball life about your I mean uh, how you came here you want to talk about it because I want to hear yeah. it from you your story no we can talk about everything can you uh, talk about your basketball life I mean tell us about your story I mean how did you start playing basketball your college life NBA summer league and Ege fitness Um, I started to play basketball when I was about, about 10, but not seriously. Um, I didn't get serious in, uh, serious in basketball until about high school. I played one year in middle school, um, freshman year, I kind of played, um, I broke my ankle sophomore year twice. So, um, I didn't play at all my sophomore year, junior year. I played about three games all season. I was on the top team, but, um, I never actually got in the games um, and then senior year i just had a crazy year um i got heavily recruited by a lot of national junior colleges in america um but i just didn't want to go to school so i didn't have the grades to go to division one at the time um and uh, i went to ms community college had an amazing year and um kind of from there really just took off um sent out my highlight tape to every single division one school for about a month straight or so. It's getting older and older, so I can't remember how long it was, but I sent out every, you know, an email to every single school, every coach at the school, um, just saying, I want to play division one basketball. And um, Arizona State took a chance, um, went to the NCAA tournament, um, you know, NBA Summer League, Italy, Korea, Russia. So that's that's kind of the, the big picture. So the key is to never stop grinding, yeah? You, you, no, for sure. I mean, uh, a lot of people say that, and I mean, uh, you just got to be smart with your grind. There's no need to drive yourself into the ground about things you can't control. All you can control is, you know, what's in front of you. All right. Let's talk about Ege Fitness. You guys know each other, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we met at uh, Edmonds Community College. Um, the Ege now is a lot different from the Ege, you know, from years past. I, I, I think we reconnected on the internet maybe four years ago, um, just when he was starting to get uh, bigger on Instagram with his page. And um, we just kind of talked and we was always gonna, uh, we were always telling each other we we're gonna stay in contact and we just did over the years. Um, and that's how that came about. Um, I dropped out of college at the time uh, when he was coming in. And, you know, I needed a place to stay, a place to, um, to just chill. And he actually let me come stay at his place, like on the living room on the floor in the couch for about a month at that time. And uh, that, that meant everything because I was able to, you know, work, get my job to get back into school the following year. Yeah, Ege is this still real deal, man. Shout out to Ege. No, for sure, for sure. All right, what is the biggest difference between Turkey and USA? Any crazy fun moments in Turkey? Any funny stories about Turkey? <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of funny things that have happened in Turkey since, I'm being, since I've been here. I'm, I mean, just learning the culture, Mm -hmm. and realizing that the country is a lot older than america you know you go to the states we have everybody else's culture in one place we don't really have our own culture so to come to turkey 
and see that uh, is pretty eye opening. And to finally be in Istanbul and be able to play, I'm so happy and I'm so relieved <laughs> that, uh, you know, I'm finally here. But um, the, the biggest difference, I think, is the food. But, you know, I like the food in both places. You eat the baklavas, right? You have to. I mean, like. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I eat pretty much uh, everything. It's a few things that I don't like ingredients wise, but uh, I try pretty much every food. And my wife makes me try a lot of foods. What is your favorite one? Um, I, I got to go with the chicken wings, man. The taboo cannot. That, that will always be number <laughs> one just because I ate so much of that back in the States. Uh, so here I just get it grilled and it's just delicious. Sometimes, you know, in Gazi and Tepe, it was really, really spicy. But I got used to it after a year. All right, let's go back to the basketball then. Who is your idol in the basketball? Um, I don't really think I have an idol in basketball per se because... Um, <laughs> Come on, bro, like it's... It should be this. Nah. <laughs> no, I mean, basketball wasn't really my first love like that. You know, it was first it was track. And then, you know, in college and high school, it was like kind of tech stuff and technology and computers and stuff like that. Um, so I never really, like, I liked a lot of players, like, of course, LeBron James, Michael Jordan, you know, but if I had to say one, probably Shaquille O'Neal, and that's because we have the same name. <laughs> All right. For sure. So we're going to talk about NBA much more, but uh, I told my subscribers that I will make video with you, and they specifically uh, ask questions about dunks. Like, first of all, uh -huh. are we going to see you in next year's dunk contest? Um, I hope so. You know, I kind of feel like I got robbed in last year's dunk contest. I mean, you got two six eight guys uh -huh. just doing uh, very basic dunks for themselves. But I mean, there were pretty. There were some good ones. Kenny Gabriel had a few uh, good ones. But um, I hope to be. You know, I'm pretty sure that I will be. You know, if I'm not injured, if they ask me, I'll accept. Um, so I'm ready if if it, if the opportunity comes again. All right. Well, you want to talk about your first dunk? How old were uh, you? Uh, I mean, it was my remember? freshman year. It, it was my freshman year in high school, and uh, what? Uh, so that would have been I would have been 14, and um, and it was the first time I ever tried to dunk, and mm -hmm. the first time is when I dunked. I mean, I used to just do really high layups, you know, nothing too fancy. I knew that I could jump, but I never tried until high school. Okay. Any advice to people that who wants to dunk? Let's say I'm a 14 years old and I want to dunk uh -huh. like you. Any adv any advice for me? Uh, I mean, you just got to get in the weight room, really. Um, plyometrics, heavy lifting, especially at that young of an age, your body is maturing to, you know, what it would be for manhood. So the earlier you start, you know, when you become a teenager, um, your muscles will respond better. Um, but I didn't really do squats. You know, I, didn't, I, I think I was just blessed with it. But in high school, I did walk a lot of hills when I was younger. We played a lot of slam ball on the trampoline. I don't know if you guys know about that, but uh, yeah. slam ball was basically, you know, you, you put the trampoline there and then you got the basketball hoop mm -hmm. in the net. And I just always did a lot of jumping and I was very active in sports. So how often do you practice? Two times in a day? Like, can you talk about your um, your daily practice? Um, it just really depends. Um, in the summer, usually it's just a lot of shots, a lot of uh, basketball stuff. But once we get back and we get into the... Um, the season, we have a lot of weight training, um, you know, earlier on the season for sure. What is the basketball workout difference between Europe and USA? Is it harder on USA or Europe? Can you um, explain? Yeah, I think I think college basketball in Europe are kind of similar with how hard you have to work. But I would have to say hands down college because you're younger, you're a teenager. So it's kind of more of a shock to you when you're coming in versus in Europe, you're a grown man, you're a professional, it's your career. So you got a lot of preparation, um, yeah. you know, from the off season coming in. So it's not so much mentally is training as when you're in college, you're not getting paid, you have to go to school, you know, you got to juggle a lot of things, you got to eat right, you know. So I mean, I would definitely say college. But um, Europe, I know for certain, is much harder practice-wise than the NBA. All right. So you did play in NBA Summer League. Can you tell about that experience? Like, how was it? Um, I mean, it's amazing. You know, I tried to get in there the last um, uh, last year or this this previous summer, but uh, Beskatash came, um, you know, pretty early. So I didn't want to do anything to jeopardize the, the season coming up. But um, the NBA Summer League is an amazing experience. Um, you know, you're around guys that have just been drafted 
I was with uh, Willie Collie Stein when he first got, you know, he was a lottery pick. Um, mm -hmm. And just to see how those guys operate and, you know, how they um, maneuver. I mean, just to see regular, you know, second year NBA guys coming in and just seeing their work ethic and uh, their professionalism. Um, it's, it's really dope thing to see. Who is the most famous person that you met in NBA Summer League? Like you have, you should see some f uh, famous people, right? Yeah, um, the most famous person I met, um, probably Meek Mill, but he, you know, he's not an NBA player, but he was at one of the games, uh, we were playing Philadelphia. Yeah, he's um, a Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah, he was sitting on the uh, sidelines, but I mean, I don't, in my eyes, nobody's really bigger than James Harden, I would say, as far as meeting, uh, but I didn't meet him at Summer League, but you know, it's kind of hard to think of other guys. Um, yeah, so I mean, it was a lot of entertainers there. Yeah. And you're usually with your team, your only team. So, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to go out and just see somebody, you know, like um, like you probably would imagine. It's not it's not really like that. Yeah. You, let's talk about James Harden. He's actually following you on Instagram, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Does We this have a storyline like you, you are uh, friends or something like that? Um, it's just, you know, he went to Arizona State. I went to Arizona State. He would come to a lot of open gyms. You know, we had um, quite a few conversations. And, you know, that's just kind of one of those things. All right. It's amazing. Um, let's talk about, they ask uh, about this so much. European basketball or NBA basketball, which is harder and why? Um, I, I would, I would say there's a lot more talent in the NBA for sure, but mm -hmm. it's a player's league. So, um, you know, the players have much more control. They have much more freedom. Um, in Europe, it's a it's a coaches league, so you have to kind of adapt to that. And um, I think it's kind of uh, new for everybody that comes over. And some people can handle it, and some people can't. So I mean, me personally, um, I think it's the same amount of pressure in the NBA and in Europe. Mm -hmm. But um, I, to say which one is harder, I can't really say because you know I haven't spent a full year in the NBA, so I wouldn't know what to expect. But I spent a full year in Europe, uh, many of them. So if I had to say, of course it would be Europe, but um, I don't know, to be to be honest, I don't know. But I, I would like to think Europe mentally for sure. All right, so there's some classic questions. Who is the greatest of all time for you, basketball? Um, probably now, LeBron James. Come on, bro, like, <laughs> there's probably. two answers right here, bro. Uh, Kobe Bryant's not even in that contest, but I mean, Michael Jordan and, and LeBron James, It's, it's hard to say some days it's Michael, some days it's LeBron, but Kobe, nah, yeah, I'm I mean, sorry. Come on, I'm a big Kobe fan, bro. You don't do me like that. But... <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. All right, who is the best dunker in the game for you, all time? Um, Probably Vince Carter. Yeah. Vince Carter. Yeah, probably Vince Carter. Let's talk about your basketball career, Dan. Who is the hardest player to defense for you? Um... I feel like probably Luka Doncic, um, he was he was pretty impressive. And I think it was just more so of his confidence level with how young he was. I mean, um, it was a game where I felt that I got the better of them, you know, when I was in Gran Canaria and we played at Real Madrid. But when we went to their, you know, house, he, he played really well. Um, he has some pretty tough shots. But, um, yeah, Luka was, was pretty difficult if I had to choose one. <laughs> You know what? I actually thought he was gonna bust in NBA. He won the rookie <laughs> of the year, man. I'm sorry, don't you? I'm really sorry. Yeah, uh, I knew that wasn't happening. <laughs> or, who is the best player in the Turkey League for you right now? Um, the best player in the Turkish League, man. There's so many different players that come in um, every year. And, I mean, can you, you name know, top uh, three of them? Top three. I mean, that's tough. You know, I, I don't really like the get put on the spot about these type of questions because I don't want to offend anybody. But, um, and you know, it's kind of hard because you have players that play on Fenerbahce with other great players. And then you have some players that play on the lower teams. So it's harder, you know, to really showcase or, you know, see how easy it is for them to score or not score when the focus is just on you. Who is the best defender for your game? Who defended you best? Hmm. I mean, you're going to say, person? bro, you're going to say Alper when we, uh, <laughs> trust me. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, 
The best person that's ever defended me? That's a good question. Um, I, I can't give it to you off the top of my head, but I had some games where I was like, wow, that was really good defense. And I, I think probably Anadolu Ephes, just they play a really good team defense. Mm -hmm. um, so it was kind of difficult to score against them last year. All right. So you can, can you name top three unforgettable moments in your basketball career? Top three unforgettable moments. Any buzzer beaters, 40 point games, something like that. Um, in my whole basketball career? Yeah, whole. High school, college. Um, I think in junior college, that whole year was kind of just memorable. Um, it was two 40 point games, a 40 point game and a 46 point game. And they're both on YouTube. At least I know one is. And um, it's just kind of when you get in that zone, it's, it's just crazy. Um, so that was really good. Um, second, I think was probably at a, uh, Usak when I beat uh, Fenerbahce when well, when we beat him, but I, I scored third, 30 points. Yeah, 30 point game, right? I saw yeah, that. Yeah, that was my first year in Turkey, and it was um, kind of a big deal for everybody. And it was just kind of one of those games where I was feeling it, and uh, it just felt amazing. Um, and my third would probably be the Gaziantep last year going to the playoffs. Um, a lot of people didn't think that we could do that, and um, we were picked pretty low. So uh, I think that's what kind of made us rally to want to go to the playoffs, uh, which we eventually did. So that was, that's probably my third memorable moment. I'm going to ask some, uh, a couple more basic questions. Your favorite NBA team is probably Houston Rockets, right? <laughs> no, no. Um, like I said, again, I don't really have a favorite NBA team. Everything switches up so many years that it's hard for me to say I just like one team. All right. Any thoughts about the NBA championship? You have any favorites about the NBA championship then? Um, yeah, the Lakers for sure going to win it this year unless uh, some type of injury comes. Mm -hmm. you, need to, you need to call Kobe and tell him to, to get on the roster. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to need him. I wish. Okay, let's announce it. So we're going to play one-on-one -on -one with you, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you, th do you think you can beat me, bro? Like, <laughs> I posted your little highlights to my story to try to, you know, get you some extra fans. But, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. All right. So you're going to please do not dunk on me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't jump. All right. So this is the end of the video right now. I'm going to make closing speech. Okay. Uh, so you, do you want to say anything about me, you or your wife's channel? Any shout out? Um, you know, you can just follow my wife. Uh, at youtube.com slash c slash better mckissick or better I, I'm, I'm <laughs> i'll just put, i'll just put Bidia. here bro <laughs> okay yes video mckissick um but uh yeah you can follow her channel um i'm on there i do funny videos sometimes uh i think we're gonna do a lot more i'm gonna uh, link your instagram and youtube accounts down below uh let me speak turkish for closing Arkadaşlar okay. Şak Mekisik'le birlikte video çektik. Eşi de dünyalar güzeli bir insan. Birlikte çok güzel videolar yapıyorlar. Onları da takip etmeyi unutmayın. Instagram ve YouTube hesapları aşağıda. Şak, so thank you man. So thank you so much bro. That means a lot for me. Thanks for having me. It was fun man. We got to do this again for sure. Yeah for sure man. I'm gonna... Uh, I'll see you in Istanbul. One <laughs> that that one on one will be crazy man. Like I can't wait to play with you. Wait, wait, wait, are you editing the video or or am I editing the video? Of course it's a lot different <laughs> than who edited. Of course it's me, bro, because, because may, I'm not... We may need a neutral, we may need a neutral person <laughs> to come and edit, edit the video, but so, uh, it'll be fun. We're gonna play best of three, right? Okay, yes, for sure. All right, all right, yeah, man. For sure. All right, thank you for uh, having chat with me. That means, like I said, a lot for me. Thank you uh, and have a good time, man. Thank you, thank you for having me. See you later. See you. Şakil Mekisik'le videomuzun sonuna geldik. Birçok profesyonel oyuncuya ulaşmaya çalışıyorum. Birçok dikkatinizi çekecek içerik bulmaya çalışıyorum. NBA 2K20'nin yanında bu tür içeriklere de değer vermek istiyorum. Umarım videoyu beğenmişsinizdir. Kusura bakmayın çok heyecanlıydım. İngilizcemde hata olduysa, bir sürü lisan ettiysem affola. Şakil Mekisik'e bir kere daha çok teşekkür ederim bu videoyu benimle çektiği için. İstanbul'da onunla 1 ve 1 videosu gelecek. Ne zaman gelecek bilmiyorum ama Eylül'de İstanbul'dayım. Güzel duyurularım olacak. Belki bir buluşma olabilir bilmiyorum ama... Çok mutluyum, çok enerjiyim. Umarım beğenmişsinizdir. Görüşmek üzere. Beğendiyseniz beğenmeyi, yorum yapmayı ve abone olmayı unutmayın. Kendinize iyi bakın. Hoşça kalın. Bay bay.